Hello, Kale and I are leaving to visit his parents for American Thanksgiving in a week and I want to give his mom a gift. So I sat and I brainstormed all the possible things I could make for her in this really short time span and I realized candles. Mima loves candles. So that is what we are going to be making for her today. So if you want to watch me make a candle for my mother-in-law, then keep watching. When I asked Mima what kind of scents she liked, I asked her if she liked the scent of mulled wine, which is a very festive scent, and she said she liked it, so guess what? We're making a mulled wine candle, and I thought I would name it Mima's Mulled Wine. And to make that scent, I'm gonna be using Holiday Sparkle by Fizz Fairy, and that has the notes of apple cider, cranberry, a middle of cinnamon and clove, and a bottom of vanilla. And when I first smelled this, I thought it smelled like the glog or the mulled wine that you can buy at Ikea. So I thought that was perfect, but I don't have enough for five jars, which is what I plan on making. So I'm going to be mixing it with Mulrouge Rouge Canada's blackberry bourbon. And this actually has a note of grapes in it. So all together, the scent is just magical. I'm excited to make a candle with these two and I have a full week to test out whether or not first of all if it's safe, if it makes a good candle, if the scent throw is good and that's definitely what you would want to do when you're making candles. Whether you're giving them away to someone or selling them, you just want to make sure that the candle that you're giving to another person is a good candle. For wax we are using cocoa apricot wax and I used this wax before, loved it, has great scent throw and it's really really easy to work with. I'm going to start off by cutting chunks of this and putting that into my metal wax pouring pitcher. I have a lot of studio lights in this studio, but I only have one going right now because I think I like the mood of it better. Get some nice shadows. You're still able to see everything. But I found with all of my lights on, it just kind of washes everything out. So see how easily that cut away? Just put that right into there. Someone asked me one time if I preferred cocoa, apricot wax, or soy wax, and I have to say that I don't really see a big difference from the two that I've tried, at least from the two that I've tried from Mel Rouge, and I think both are great. Wax can be really finicky, but it could be fragrance oil specific, and that's why it's hard. That's why testing is so important. But from the candles that I've made using this wax and silky soy wax, both have been pretty good. I wouldn't say one is terrible or you should definitely pick one over the other. Sometimes it just comes down to the fragrance oil. So it's hard to say. There we go. We have enough of that wax. Wipe off this wax off my hands. I hate having wax on my hands. So we need to melt this guy fully. Now when you're choosing your fragrance oils for your candle, you want to make sure that you're going to be adding that fragrance oil to the right temperature. And the flash point of this guy is 200 and so is this guy. So as long as I add these fragrance oils to the melted wax at below 200 degrees Fahrenheit, then these should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and melt this and come back. For our candle jars, we're going to go super simple and use these straight-sided glass jars from Uline. I love them. They are very sturdy and they are good quality glass. If you're walking around the dollar store and you see a glass that you think would make an amazing candle, think twice. I'm sure a lot of people have used dollar store glass for their candles with amazing success. I personally wouldn't do it. I think that's really risky. So I get mine from Uline. And I'm going to be prepping the candles while that is melting down. It might be a little noisy in here, but that is my hot plate that's going. It's a little noisy. I apologize about that. We're just gonna remove these lids. We're making five candles today. And for which we're gonna be using the CDN 10 candles from Mo Rouge. And these are the right size to use if your candle jar is three inches wide. That's another thing you need to pay attention to when picking your wicks. Make sure you're picking one that is the right size for your jar, otherwise your candle might not burn evenly or all the way to the edge, which is what we want. We want a full melt pool when we make candles. And then I'm going to use these sticky tabs to just stick to the end of these. Pull it off and you just put it right in the middle. These jars have a number at the 
bottom and it's right in the middle so I aim for that number I'm going to take a skewer and just press down on it and then I test the adhesion this is this is important guys you want to make sure that this tab that this wick is stuck onto this jar really 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 good if you don't do the tug test like this you really risk the wick um, detaching from the glass and moving to the side of the jar and when you add heat to glass like right up against glass it really weakens glass it could shatter it it could crack it and that won't be good for the person you're gifting this candle to or the person you're selling this candle to so make sure that it's really really on there if you want to dive into the world of candle making you really can you don't have to make a whole bunch of candles you can start with one or two or five I have a video up here that talks about how to figure out how much candle wax to use but you can definitely just melt down one candle's worth of wax to start on your candle making journey if making multiple candles is overwhelming or scary for you and that is completely understandable if it is I personally love making candles I think it's a fun activity and it's quite easy if you're not fussing about things like hot throw or um, full melt pools if you just want to make a candle then you can easily do that it's literally melting wax sticking wicks to jars and pouring the wax into these jars what gets tricky is making a candle that you can be proud of that you can sell with confidence that's a whole other story and requires a lot more testing when I even want to gift candles to people I want to make sure that the candle that I'm gifting them is a quality candle these are my family <laughs> I want to make sure they're safe and that they're enjoying the presents I give them or else I become that person at Christmas time that gifts things that I make and everyone just groans like oh man here comes another poorly made candle by Jerrica you don't want to be that guy <laughs> my mother-in-law watches all my videos <laughs> hi Mima if you're watching and she's literally my number one YouTube fan I love her so much so I hope she's enjoying this video dedicated to her and the gift that I'm making her <laughs> all right so we have our five candles wicked I'm going to put them into here which is a little jar cozy and I'm gonna pour the wax while they're in here and what that will do is help insulate the candle and keep the heat on them a little bit more evenly so that it helps prevent tunneling that could happen it won't 100% prevent it I don't know how to 100% prevent tunneling it happens no matter what wax I use no matter what temperature I pour at so I don't worry as much because I'm able to fix it super easily it's not something that I'm loosely over but if I can reduce the amount of it happening I'll always try that and that's what this box is for and there you go now I just need for the wax to melt and then I'll pour it Hi. Hi. Looking for your ID. It's in the same pocket as my credit cards. Did you get a new wallet? Yeah. That's nice. Thanks. When did you get it? Uh, a while back. Uh, a couple months ago. Actually, I still have to pour my fragrance oil, so I'm going to do that real quick. I need a jar for that. Or a measuring cup. Got it. Tear. First up, holiday sparkle. Mmm. -hmm so good so this has spruce in it which makes it Christmassy if it didn't have the spruce it would make it more fall mm. and whenever fragrance oils add fur or spruce it can be hit or miss but this smells good I like it mixed with the berry and the clove but this mixed with blackberry bourbon so good I think this is my favorite Mo Rouge fragrance oil how many of you have used this fragrance oil and have fallen in love with it instantly I have multiple bottles of this. I can never get enough. I actually ran out of berry bourbon, so I added a little bit of oak and whiskey, and that that just elevated it to a whole other experience. I'm gonna go ahead and order some more of that of blackberry bourbon. That smells so good. Perfect, 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 perfect. So we're now just waiting for the wax to melt down. I'm doing it in that pitcher and not in my presto pot, so it's taking a little bit longer. Uh, but it should be done soon. We're getting there. 
we're getting there. Wax melt update. It is nowhere near close. Well, it's kind of close, but we still have some ways to go. So the wait continues. I'm helping her along by giving it a stir. We are getting there, guys. We have to melt this wax down, though, to, I think, 190 before we can take it off the heat. Let me double check that. Yep, 190 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. We are getting there, though, slowly but surely. At least the wax all, is all melted. Okay, we're now at 180, so it's only a matter of time. Just gotta keep stirring and be patient. I think you got it. Yep. Bam, 192. We're in business. Let's add the fragrance oil to the sky right now. So we are gonna add our fragrance oil to our melted wax and then we're going to stir for at least two minutes and that will help the fragrance bind to our wax. And then we're gonna pour. It smells amazing. Our tree still doesn't have ornaments on it, but we plan on doing that once we get back from our vacation. So it is 4.04. I'm gonna stir until my clock says 4.06. Kill and I are so excited to be visiting his family for American Thanksgiving. It is just such a fun time of the year at his family's house. They do a big American Thanksgiving dinner at um, his brother's house. All right, two minutes are up. It's time to pour. Let me get my candles in frame and let me get maybe a secondary shot. Let me pouring it. Zoom you guys in. Yeah, I think that's focused. All right, let's pour. Let's pour these guys. No. These pitchers are awesome, but they I always drip so badly with them. Ugh. I think I have to pour faster. That's my issue. My hesitancy is causing it to drip. Just pour with confidence. See, that one was good. It gets better the more I get to the bottom. Oh, and I have quite a bit more. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, I'm gonna have to <laughs> assemble a jar real quick. Oh gosh. Speed round. Under pressure. All right, we're getting our sixth jar. Actually, I'll pour it without it in the box so you guys can see the difference. And now I can see the difference. <laughs> Cause maybe it'll be the exact same and I'm just doing it for nothing. Okay, let's do this guy by himself over here. Let's move you so you can see him being poured. All right. Oh, is he gonna be like halfway full? Yeah, he's gonna be half, Oh, It's okay. This will be my test candle. Sometimes I my calculations are so spot on and other times it's just not as spot on. That's okay, that's okay. All right, now we're going to put in our spacers or what do you call them wick centerers Ooh, the zoomed in angles look pretty cool wick center time so i'm gonna put my wick center in here and we are going to pull and then slide it over so that it's tight so you want it to stay in the middle that is the goal is this one going in perfect which way do you guys do these wick centers? I've seen people do it this way, the way I'm doing it, and then this way. I feel like both are are good. <laughs> Maybe I'm I'm doing it wrong. Please tell me in the comments if this is if I'm just totally watching it. Cause I think it still has the same effect. Like it still centers the wick. Whether you do it the other way. I just feel like it sticks to the middle better if I do it upside down like that. If I do it like this, it's a more sturdy hold. At least that's what I've observed. Get in there, yeah. All right. Oh, I have to do a wick center for my test candle too. There we go. Perfect. So we are going to wait for these to solidify and then come back and I'll show you what they look like once everything is solid and no longer liquid. 
and that'll be done. So here are the candles and we have sinkholes, but the one candle, our half candle, our tester candle, they don't. This is not really a true test because I only filled this jar about halfway where the other jars are filled up all the way to the top, but these guys have holes in them, the tunneling. It's super common for this to happen, so I'm not bothered by it anymore like I used to. The fix is so easy, and I will show you just, just how easy in a sec. So we have these two that turned out great, no sinkholes, but these three, these guys all got tiny little sinkholes that I need to fix. And this one's just fine. So let me do that real quick. So I use this heat gun, and this is my tool when I am shrink wrapping bath bombs, but this comes in really handy for fixing these sinkholes. So I just turn this on, and I point it down into the, I'm bring it closer actually. I bring it closer to where the hole is, and you can see the wax melts instantly and it's going right into that hole. And what you're trying to do, just have that melted wax fill up the hole so that we have a smooth top. And it's important while you're doing this too to have a full melt hole so that when it solidifies, it's completely smooth over the top. So that's that one fixed. Let's do this guy. It's gonna take a lot to just melt these down and fill up that sinkhole. This one's a really big one. I don't know if you're able to see it. Yeah, there. <clears throat> this is a pretty big one. Yeah, this one goes in pretty deep, so I have to really blast this for quite a bit until all of that melted wax fills up that sinkhole. And there we go. We have filled up and that should dry nicely. And while those are resolidifying, I'm going to trim these wicks. And we're gonna trim them to about a quarter of an inch tall. And there is a completely smoothed candle and you can barely, you can't even see where there was a sinkhole just a few minutes ago, which is so cool. I'm also going to trim my tester candle like so. So for cocoa apricot wax, Moru suggests a cure time of actually two weeks. I will be curing these for about one week before I gift it to my mother-in-law and I'll tell her to wait another week before she lights it to have optimal scent throw. Oh, and something I guess I didn't mention, even though there were sinkholes, the glass adhesion on these guys are fantastic. I don't have those wet spots on the sides of the glass, which is amazing. So I have these labels that I made through Canva, and the name of the candle is Mima's Mulled Wine, and I got this really beautiful picture of a mug full of mulled wine. There's some cloves and a cinnamon stick in there from Canva. I love Canva for my graphics because I can't draw very well and I like having graphics on my products. So Canva is my go-to. I have a link to that in my description box below. A lot of the really great pictures like the picture of this mulled wine is a pro image and you can only access it if you have a pro account about $10 a month, I think it's absolutely worth it. And there you have a gorgeous candle that just looks perfect, high-end, and would make an amazing gift. Yes, I even make a label for the tester jar. I still want it to look good on my counter while I'm testing it out, guys. And that is it, a beautiful candle. I am so happy with how these candles turned out. They smell absolutely divine. They're not only soothing, but they are so festive and I think a great scent for this time of year. 
and I really hope my mother-in-law likes this. Actually, I know she will love this, so I'm really excited to give it to her. I'll actually insert some footage of me giving it to her and her reaction right here. Look at these! These are some candles for you. Mima smoked wine! <laughs> Thank you, sweet. Oh, you're welcome! Oh, I love it! I can't. Ooh, I love it! Okay, let's put it on the table, sister. I'm glad you like it. Oh, Kelly. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Just a minute. Smell it. Kelly, Just you want to smell? smell? Oh, you like it? That's beautiful. Oh, yes. If you want info on any of the materials that I use, the fragrance oils, the waxes, the jars, all of that is linked down below. And if you want a step-by-step -step printable PDF on how to make this exact project, I have that on my Patreon. Speaking of my Patreon, thank you to my patrons. You are amazing. Without you guys, this channel would not be the same. And I honestly think I would not have the motivation to make as many videos as I do. So you guys, thank you so much, especially my bubble BFFs right here. They are the true MVPs. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. And that's it. If you like this kind of video, give it a big thumbs up. If you want to see more, then please subscribe for more fun projects. 2022 is winding up, but that doesn't mean that the fun times have to end just yet. And I'm also considering doing Vlogmas which will be crazy, but I want to attempt it. <laughs> but until the next video, keep smiling, keep being awesome, and keep making beautiful things like candles for your friends and family and loved ones and customers. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.